Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, deviance in the workplace has become a lot more prevalent today, with a study by Henley in 2005, I believe, saying that 95% of companies have reported some sort of deviance in their organization. And I've actually spent about a year and a half uh, researching this type of uh, information for a paper I wrote, so I'm very interested in letting you know what my findings today. Uh, we're going to start off with talking about what deviance is and its costs, then go into some of the causes of deviance, and last but not least, my recommendations to you as HR managers and what you can do to deter deviance. So, deviance is defined by Robinson and Binet as a voluntary behavior which violates organizational norms and threatens the well-being of an organization, its members, or both. And those same people came up with a really cool topology of the different types of deviance, and they're split into four sections. And here's where I kind of want your involvement. I just want you to, to let me know some of which one of these have you seen go on in your organization. And I'll check them off. For verbal. For verbal abuse? Natasha? Well, I was going to say verbal abuse. Oh, sexual harassment. Yeah. Okay. Anyone leaving early or taking excessive breaks? Yes? Mm -hmm. Property. Property? whole area, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Potentially working slow, wasting resources. Yeah, so a lot of them. Probably all of it. Okay. <laughs> well, this is so you can kind of get an idea of exactly what type of behavior I'm talking about. Okay, moving into the cost, there's financial, psychological, and social costs to deviance. The financial, $50 billion estimated in theft per year, so that's a lot of money. And then also uh, $759 billion in lost productivity per year just from being on the computer and going on different websites like YouTube and Facebook. And if these numbers were done more currently, I'm sure these numbers would be a lot higher. For social and psychological, victims of interpersonal deviance, according to Henley, have more stress-related problems, decreased productivity, and higher turnover. So this is showing that not all the costs are strictly financial. So now that you understand what behaviors I'm talking about and what the costs are, I'm going to move into the causes. And I'm going to pick out personality and a situational factor called organizational justice. So starting off with personality, we have the big five. And this model is from Robbins and Judge. Those are the five aspects. And Salgado actually did a study where they found out that the level of conscientiousness and agreeableness in people were the valid predictors of deviance. For organizational justice, this, according to Henley, is the perception of fairness of people in the workplace. And there's three types. You have distributive, which is basically looking at your pay, any benefits that you get, if they're fair. Then you have procedural justice, which means the, how the fairness of the policies and procedures are that you have in the organization. And lastly, you have interactional justice, which is the fairness of how you carry out those policies and procedures. And just to kind of put them into real life, Gerald Greenberg actually two studies that demonstrate both distributive justice and interactional justice. For interactional, he had three pay cuts at um, different manufacturing plants. One was a control, so there was no cut. Another one was a pay cut without an explanation as to why. And then the other one was a pay cut with an explanation. And it turns out that when you explain, you have less deviance. <coughs> so that would be interactional justice. The second one was a random two-week reassignment of office space. So I thought that was interesting. It had to deal with people who went from a cubicle to like a corner office and vice versa. And people who went from a cubicle to a bigger office actually uh, increased their productivity in order to balance out this extra outcome to feel like they deserve to have a bigger office. So this is a, an example of how distributive um, justice works. So now that I've explained uh, some of the causes, I'm going to go into my recommendations, which came from the causes as to what I want you to do in your own organizations to decrease deviance. The first is pretty simple. It's to review your original compensation plans and your corrective action policies and to see, do they have the three parts of organizational justice? Do the punishments uh, fit the crime? Do you have your review or your increase in pay based on how the worker works and not some other fuzzy type of um, measurement like favoritism? If we know it happens all the time, it really shouldn't. It doesn't have anything to do with you know, uh, the well-being of the company it really shouldn't happen. So that's something I want you to all look at. The second one happens to be 360-degree performance <coughs> evaluations. Now, most companies, they do it just the employee and their immediate manager, and you just have the two, and that's it. 
So if someone wants to go do something on the side, unless their immediate manager finds out about it, it probably won't show up on their performance about. With 360, you kind of take that out of the mix because it's not just you, it's not just your manager, it's your peers, it's your subordinates, it may be other managers that you're, have, you're in contact with every so often. And they're all involved. So it makes it harder for you to go and do something because it's more people that you have to avoid. So I think that's another good recommendation for you all to consider. The last recommendation I have is the Employee Reliability Inventory Test. This is an integrity test. So this links back to when I talked about a cause of the big five personalities and how you had conscientiousness and agreeableness. These are measured in this test. It's according to Borofsky, who is the person who um, wrote the book on what this test is about. Uh, it's a 20 minute, 81 question test. And it's scored on seven different categories. Like I said, two are from the personality thing earlier. And its whole purpose is to help you pick reliable and um, people that are very productive. And basically, if you score low on this test, that's not good. If, uh, <laughs> and also, if you score low on this test and it's for a position you're applying for where there's a lot of autonomy, for example, that's probably not the best mix you want to have. So this is a very good thing to use um, as another recommendation. So in conclusion, I hope I have greatly described to you the impact of deviance in the workplace today, why you need to be concerned about it. I went through what the deviance uh, different behaviors are for deviants, the different causes, the costs, as well as some recommendations. And for you guys, it's not that I need you to implement all three recommendations at once. I just want you to take this information back to your um, companies, talk to your HR man other HR managers in your department, and see which of the three best fit your organization. Because the point is, you have to do something. If you're not being proactive, you're being reactive. And when you're like that, it ends up being a lot more costly.